I have got a phenomenal concept for you. It's an 80-20 tool, and if you understand this, it will help you to remove dozens of hours of week of work per week from your business and allow you to grow faster than ever. If you're interested in that, stay tuned for the next handful of minutes. I'm gonna share with you a fascinating concept called decision burden. Hi, my name is Tim Francis from ProfitFactory.com where we help internet businesses to scale up. If you've been following our vlog, there's a few things you know. Number one, we have tons of amazing tools around 8020, scaling systems, Colby, great game of business, on and on and on and on. Secondly, you also know that I've recently started doing a daily vlog and it has been crushing me with the amount of work that it's required for editing and whatnot. So I've been spending some time deep in this thought of how can I get this work off of my plate? Now, if you know 8020, you know that one of the cornerstone ideas of 8020 is figuring out what is the one or two decisions that I can make on the front of a project that will eliminate the need for tons of other decisions afterwards. And all of this is related to this idea of decision burden. Now, you've maybe heard of decision fatigue before. It was popularized in the book Essentialism by Greg McKean, I believe. It might even also be mentioned in Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Decision fatigue, there's a very famous um, uh, research study done that looked at parole cases in Israel. It took a look at 1,100 parole cases and, uh, or, or parole hearings, and they, the researchers noticed that when the parole hearing happened in the morning, when all the parole officers were fresh and rested, there was about a 70% chance that the inmate would, would get out on parole. However, if that same inmate were to come in at the end of the day, after the parole board had been hearing cases all day long, there's only about a 10% chance that that inmate would get out on parole. And the only thing the researchers could attribute it to was this idea of decision fatigue. When we are completely tired of making decisions towards the end of the day or the end of a work session, will simply re revert back to whatever the default is, whatever the status quo is, and in this case it was, if they're already in jail, just leave them in jail. So decision fatigue is related to decision burden in that it's decision burden is kind of like the heaviness that creates the fatigue in the first place. Now when it comes to editing this video, I had a decision to make. Currently, I'm spending a ton of time doing all of the editing and whatnot. And I have an option to just hire an editor to come and do all the shooting and all the editing and everything. But you know what? I would just be going from spending a lot of my time to a lot of my money. I budgeted it out and I'd probably have to spend between two and five thousand dollars a month to get somebody to shoot and edit. I mean, it's basically a full-time salary of another employee. And I'm just not ready to bring on a contractor, employee, or whatnot at that pay level. Not at this point anyways. So for this project to be sustainable, for me to continue producing this vlog and sharing it with entrepreneurs like you, I had to figure out how to reduce total time and total money so that I could actually afford in time and money to keep it going. That's what spurned all this 80-20 thinking. 80-20 thinking for me is sitting actually in this room, my 80-20 room, with a paper and a pen. Usually my laptop is not involved. Usually all electronic devices are off. And I'm just asking the deep, important questions that allow me to find the solutions to what is on my mind. So decision burden is made up of two factors. Decision burden is made up of both the number of decisions that need to be made as well as the difficulty of decisions that need to be made. And so when you actually multiply the total number of decisions that need to be made on a task or a project, you multiply that by the difficulty of the decisions that need to be made, and that's what you can calculate the total decision burden as. Now I'm not ask, asking you to actually like write down all the decisions and the approximate dollar value. This is more of a, a theoretical framework to think about. So if we put it together, we see that if we have very simple work, but a lot of it has to be done, that causes the cost to go up. Or if it's just a little bit of work, but the fee is really high because it's very difficult, then 
the cost will also go up. So if you spend an hour with a lawyer, even though it's just an hour, it's going to be really expensive. Now before I go any further, let's talk specifically about the vlog. I was thinking about what makes a great episode. A great episode, let's say this is the level of a great episode and this is the level of a crappy episode. One way or another, we got to make it up to this line for it to be a good episode. I realized that a great episode could have amazing content, so like over here, a lot of content, or if it didn't have much content, it had to have a ton of editing and whiz-bang production to make it up to this top line. An example of a whiz-bang heavy video is like high school kids who have a vlog and it's just like whoa, whoa, ah, all this like crazy cutting and like in your face like hype and it's just like this seizure the whole way through. That would be a ton of whiz-bang editing and they have to rely on that because their content is oh so thin. <laughs> on the flip side, if we think about a TED Talk, a TED Talk has tons of content and because of that, it's, they're great episodes and it can hold the attention of the viewer with very, very, very little editing. In fact, if you look at the best TED Talks, oftentimes it's maybe two cameras and it's no more than a dozen or fewer cuts through the whole 18 minute presentation. It's amazing. So if I have to decide how to reduce the overall cost of time and money, this, and this is the part that is directly applicable to you. If I want to reduce the total amount of money, time and money that I want to spend on this project, whether it's my own work or the work of a teammate, I need to ask myself one of two questions. How can I reduce the total number of decisions that need to make? And how, do, how can I reduce the difficulty of decisions that need to be made? So as I asked myself that question, I realized that there was a number of different options to reduce the overall number of decisions. And by the way, the total number of decisions is directly related to the number of hours that you're going to have to pay somebody. So there's a couple obvious options right off the top. If I just shot fewer episodes, obviously there would be less hours and fewer overall decisions to be made. Secondly, I could shoot shorter episodes, which again, would just reduce the total number of decisions and therefore the number of hours I needed to hire someone. Now there's a bit of an issue with that. I was talking to my friend Tan from AsianEfficiency.com and he was saying, if you're only going to do one episode a week, that will help nurture your current following. But if you want to actually build a following of new people all the time, you really need to be doing multiple episodes a week, maybe even one a day. And so fewer episodes isn't really an option. Now, if we look back at the content versus production trade-off, I'm not really willing to cut back on the quality of the content. And sometimes, kind of like a TED Talk, I'm going to need more than just two or three minutes to be able to really explain an idea. Some other options to reduce the total number of decisions would be cleaner speaking. If I get better at delivering my content in one take, then an editor doesn't have to cut together between a bunch of different takes. Furthermore, if I can really cut down on the ums, buts, ands, and mistakes, again, that reduces the total number of cuts that an editor would have to make. At the bottom here, and we kind of already touched on this, is if I have A plus content, then the editing choices are very limited to just a few simple cuts and that's it. And that all of these are options of how to reduce the number of edits and therefore the number of hours I'd have to hire someone. I'm sure there's more and in your business, your tasks, your projects, it's going to be different. And even though the specifics are different, the principle is still the same. And so you can take this kind of thinking into tons of different tasks and projects along the way. Now, obviously this is one side of the, the story. The other side is how do I decrease the difficulty of the decisions that have to be made? and therefore decrease the dollars per hour that I'd have to pay someone. If all we're doing is cuts and fades, I can probably find someone anywhere from $5 an hour all the way up to about $20 an hour. If I need someone to help me with very difficult editing decisions, like how do we find music? Are we doing green screens? Are we doing all kinds of advanced tools? Then I'm going to probably have to pay $25 to $70 an hour for editing. So as I asked myself, what would I have to change about this vlog to decrease 
and the difficulty of decisions, I realized I could simply set an episode format. So every episode has the same sequence. If you think of The Office with Steve Carell, there's always a 90 second joke at the front, then the intro screen, then an 18 minutes of episode, and then a final little 90 second one-on-one -on -one interview with Steve Carell or somebody almost as like a postscript to the whole episode. If you think of Saturday Night Live, there's always a monologue with a couple actors and a band that plays a couple segments and then a couple comedy skits, and that's the format. So if I were to come up with a set episode format, then that decision could be made once, I could hand it off to the editor, and the editor would then just repeat that again and again and again without them having to make any kind of like higher level creative decisions about the format and the whole direction of, the ep of each episode. Secondly, I could set a weekly format or a weekly rhythm. Maybe Tuesdays is questions from entrepreneurs like you. Maybe Thursdays is always going to be tales from the trenches. Maybe Saturdays is out and about in the town with Tim, hanging out in Edmonton, Canada, New York City, or whatever city I happen to be in. Simple editing would also decrease the difficulty. And so if I can create a, a vlog that just requires cuts and fades, maybe one or two other really easy kinds of edits, that again direct, you know, directly reduces the difficulty. Um, again, reducing the whiz-bang factor. Furthermore, and I was actually surprised by this, I found myself searching, searching, searching for music, royalty-free music to go into my vlogs. And so if I can figure out one or two great music sources, then the editor is not going to have to spend a whole bunch of their time or and nor will they need to have a whole bunch of experience or knowledge to, to source the music. I could also set a style guide to always say, all right, we always use these fonts, these colors, these kinds of title screens to really help cut down the difficulty of decisions. Lastly, and we're coming back to this again, if I have A plus content, then I don't need the whiz bang editing. So there's a few things that really become obvious to me. Number one is quality of content for me is extremely important. And secondly, that I would rather invest my time into producing incredible content and to become better and better at delivering that content. I believe I will be using speaking for basically the rest of my life. It's already a top 20% skill for me and I know if I double down and put more effort into it, I can become one of the best in the world. I sincerely believe that this vlog is incredibly valuable not just this episode, but all episodes. I believe it helps me to fulfill my why reason, which is triumph of the human spirit, and it helps me help you to also succeed in the triumph of your human spirit. By doing this thinking, I came to understand about decision burden. By understanding the components of decision burden, it gave me the roadmap to take a look at what are some other decisions and problems I'm gonna to have to solve. And piece by piece, we're getting more and more granular to now it's very actionable. So for me next with the vlog is for me to do a little more soul searching on you know, my target market, my goals, um, what success would feel like, and ultimately answering that question I asked a few episodes ago, what would I have to change about this vlog that I could deliver at least 80% of the value to you or more, get at least 80% of the enjoyment or more for me, while me having to put in less than 20% of time and energy and money that I've been putting in so far. I hope you can see how decision burden and the two parts that make, up, make it up, decision volume and decision difficulty, can help you to start seeing the roadmap to where you can make some changes in your business to really reduce expense, reduce workload, reduce hours of labor, and ultimately increase profits and revenue and just enjoyment and freedom in your business. My name is Tim Francis from ProfitFactory.com. I read all the comments that get left on all of our videos. And so if you have anything you'd like to share, please add it in the comments below. See you in the next episode.